So this is the second video on Excel and linear regression. So by the end of the last video, we got up to this stage where we could extract uh, a slope and an intercept using formulas, uh, rather than just necessarily looking at what the trend line says. And now we're gonna get on to doing the errors associated with it as well. So to recap kind of the idea of errors, if you've looked at the preamble to this, you'll see a formula very similar to this. And it, this is telling you what the standard error of that slope is. Uh, and again, just like all the ones to do with this, it's a very complicated summing up, dividing by stuff, taking away and from averages and so on, and doing some squares. It's really hard work to do for any more than a handful of data points. So we can just get a computer to do it. And a computer can put that formula in and calculate it for you instantly. But before doing that, I'm just going to briefly cover what is sort of happening here, and what you can do if you need to fudge it. Uh, so this is our least squares diagram. Uh, the blue circles represent real data points and the red line feature uh, represents the best fit. And the best fit here means that these black lines, the distance and difference between the predicted value in red and the real value in blue, uh, that distance is as low as it can be. You know, you can fiddle around with the computer trying to sum this up and doing it um, manually, or you can use some of the equations to do it in a simple way. Um, but that is the lowest possible value. Now, imagine for a moment that maybe some of the data points are unreliable and we get rid of one. Well, the slope is going to respond to that, is going to um, maybe get a bit steeper because that's where the data is. The data is always going to be a bit random. Your slope could be slightly higher or lower than what you estimated. But it doesn't need to be that point that's wrong. It could be that point that's wrong. In which case, the slope, maybe you can see, gets dragged down a little lower. Um, in any case, it doesn't really matter because we just need to figure out what's the kind of the plus or the minus value of this. What's what's the steepest slope? What's the shallowest slope? And that's kind of what that equation does for us. And so we're now going to have a look at Excel and how to implement that equation. So let's just tw uh, switch back to that screen. And the formula we're going to use is an array formula called line stats. <clears throat> and or line st. Now, before doing this, I'm just going to type in what it is. It is what's called an array formula. And an array formula works over multiple cells. A normal formula, if we typed in slope, uh, would just be in one cell. An array formula acts over multiple cells. So in order to enter it, I'm going to have to highlight more than one cell. Uh, and in this case, for this specific example, we're going to do a two by two uh, box. So four cells in total, two by two. And leaving it there, not touching anything else, I'm just going to type in equals line ST. Or type in line and then tab to auto complete it. Now it's asking me for known Y values. And the known Y values are these ones here. But previously I gave them a name, so I just need to type in Y. So Good thing about using defined names, uh, you can reuse them infinitely. Then comma, now it wants to do on X's. So the exact same way around as the slope and the intercept, Y's first, X's second. And then the next two questions are about options. Do you want to calculate the intercept normally or set it to zero? So for this, we want to true. It's slightly counterintuitive in my opinion, but true means to calculate the intercept normally. Sometimes you can force the intercept through zero. It's probably not the best practice to do that. So let's come at that. And the final one is, do you want the additional regression statistics? And well, yeah, we do. The, the, the point of this is to get the plus and minus values of everything. So I'm gonna type in true there again. It doesn't need to be in capital letters, but sometimes it feels nice. Now to enter that, you do not press enter immediately. If you do, your work in trying to figure out how to uh, put the inputs there will be wasted. So to input an array formula, you need to press control shift, hold those down and hit enter. So you do control shift return at the same time. 
if you try to um, get rid of a bit without that, it will give you a pop-up and not let you edit it. And array formula in Excel is effectively locked. So you have to select all of it to delete it. I'm just gonna put these numbers back up. Now, <clears throat> what we can see here are two numbers on the top that we should already be able to see on screen. 1.0057, well, that's up here on the trend line. It's 1.0057. Uh, it's the exact same as slope. So if I type, quickly type in slope just to prove it, it's the exact same number out. And the one on the right, 0.1857, well, 0.1857 is up here on the trend line as well. That is the intercept, the exact same number that you would get out of intercept. Type that in, 1857. The numbers underneath are the plus and minus values that you might want to use. Um, so these are the standard errors of the slope and the intercept as determined by the linear regression formulas that tell you that. Uh, so these are really useful. Now, here's the thing. You probably don't want all of these significant figures. So what I'm going to do is round them off by formatting. This is quite a good tr trick to make sure that your sheet is nice and clean. So on the home tab, this number has a format button that will just help you expand or contract the number of decimal places. And any errors or uncertainties, you just want one significant figure, that's it. And then the significant figures of the actual value need to match that. So my point zero zero, my point zero 0.04 here is one, two decimal places. So I only want two decimal places for that. For here, my 0.1 is one decimal place, so I only want Oops, don't want a percentage. I want one significant figure, one decimal place for that. And that's it. So <clears throat> that's effectively it. Those are now the numbers that you'll want to quote. Uh, I'm going to very quickly show you a trick for formatting this. What I'm going to do is put these numbers back the way they are. Um, that's just a formatting trick. The numbers behind the scenes are still always going to be uh, always used, no matter um, how much you change this. So what I'm going to now do is type in equals round, and this rounds numbers off to a specified number of digits. So the number I want is going to be that intercept, not the intercept, sorry, that's the slope, and comma, the number of digits I want is going to be two, two decimal places. So if I enter that, I get 0 0.01. And the really nice thing is it's actually rounded off. We now can't get any more numbers than that. And this is actually quite useful now. Uh, and what I'm going to do is do the same thing by dragging it down there. So if I highlight something in Excel, click this little green box in the corner and drag down, it will drag down and all the reference cells will drag down with it. So I'm now looking at, instead of that box, I'm looking at that box. So I want 1.01 .01 plus or minus 0 0.04. Well, what I'm going to do, excuse me, my copy a character, is I'm going to type in equals that box there, ampersand character, and I'm going to put inside two quote marks, uh, the plus and minus character. Uh, you can type that in if you've got an alphanumeric keyboard. It's 241, hold down alt, 241. I don't have one in front of me, unfortunately, so I have to copy and paste it from elsewhere. And I'm going to put that ampersand here. So now I've got 1.01 .01 plus or minus 0.04. In fact, I can even just copy that formula and replace the cell with it. So I want to copy that one. So what I'm now doing is rounding off the slope, putting a plus and minus character in the middle and rounding off the, uh, the standard error. So this is how it should really be formatted uh, when you're actually presenting it. So let me just put some formatting on there.
So when you're presenting your number, it should look like that. It should have the right number rounding off and it should have a plus and minus in it as well. And the nice thing about doing this in Excel and even doing this little trick here is that if you re-record something in the lab and change the numbers, let's say that that becomes 0 0.05, this becomes 5.1, that comes 2.0, oh, 3.05, 2.1, all of those are updating. This error here is now getting smaller. Um, <clears throat> let's make it even smaller, let's go 4.1. Um, so we're now we're seeing all of this update in real time um, and live. So if you have to go back through your lab report, lab um, stuff and redo some numbers, Excel will automatically update it and it will save you time having to do these calculations again and again. Uh, so that will automatically update, that automatically updates. Um, and that's what I mean by being quite powerful with a low barrier to entry. You don't need to know much about the code behind the scenes or anything like this. The most complicated thing we have to remember here is control shift return to enter this array formula. Because if you try to edit it, or if we try to change this to false to, sh to force the uh, intercept through, it won't work. It will just shout at you. So you have to type in the changes and then control shift return. And it changes. You can see I've changed this to false, which means there's now no intercept. Let's undo that. So hopefully this is really useful for you in the lab. Do review how to do this. Make sure you're really well practiced with it because it's really good when you're doing analytical, physical, any kind of experiments that involve linear regression. This is a super fast and simple way of getting the right answers.